Yeah, so today's video is on antiviral chemotherapy, so let's begin. So, firstly, antibacterial drugs such as penicillin antibiotics have proved very successful since they act against the bacterial structure, the cell wall, which is not present in eukaryotic cells. In contrast, most antiviral agents have proved of little use therapeutically since the virus uses host cell metabolic reactions and for the most part, antiviral agents will be also anti-cell agents. Therefore, the alternative approach of stimulating the host's immune responses using vaccines has been most often pursued. Nonetheless, there are activities such as enzymes that are virus encoded and therefore offer potential virus specific targets. This is particularly the case with the viruses that have large genomes encoded for their own replication enzymes. Even so, many antivirals that apparently are effective in vitro are, effective, are ineffective in vivo. So the properties of an antiviral drug should be that they interfere with a virus specific function, either because the function is unique to the virus or similar host function is much less susceptible to the drug, or it interferes with a cellular function so the virus cannot replicate. To be specific, the antiviral drug must only kill virus infected cells. This can be done by restricting the drug adaptation to virus infected cells. For an ideal drug should be water soluble, stable in the bloodstream and is easily taken up by cells. An ideal drug should not be toxic, carcinogenic, allergenic, mutagenic or tractorogenic. Toxicity of an antiviral drug can be acceptable if there is no alternative such as for example in symptomatic rabies or hemorrhagic fever. Obviously a good drug must show much more toxicity to the virus than the whole cell. This is measured selectively by the therapeutic intent of the drug, which is calculated by the minimum dose that is toxic to the cell, divided by the minimum dose that is toxic to the virus. Effective drugs have a TI of 100 to 1000 or better. Fusion of viral and host cell membrane. Agents that block fusion of HIV with the host cell by interacting with GP41. The first one is enfuvirtatide. So these are peptides derived from GP41, which can inhibit infection, most likely by blocking the interaction of GP41 with cell membrane proteins during fusion by stopping a conformational change that results from the association of two GP41 molecules, which is necessary for fusion. This is also known as fusion as a fatty set amino, pepti you know, amino acid peptide. It corresponds to residues 127162 of GP41 and blocks this conformational change. There is a cavity on GP41 that could hold a small molecule inhibitor. Peptides containing, containing D amino acids that would fit this cavity have been identified and can inhibit fusion. Looking at RFI641, also known as biphenyltyrosine, this inhibits fusion of the membrane of the respiratory syncreatile virus for cell membrane. It alters the conformation of the fusion I protein of the virus and is active in vivo in several animal models. This is active against RSVA and V strains much better than ribovirin, which is routinely used in treating RSV infections. It seems to be RSV specific. <coughs> it was abandoned for routine use because of toxicity problems and delivery problems. It cannot be taken orally and it is, to, and it is delivered as an aerosol, but patients will likely find a mode of delivery problematical. It can be used for infants and derivatives are less toxic. We can have BMS 433741, it's also an RSV fusion inhibitor. It was an inhibition of a viral F protein induced membrane fusion, it is active against both an A and B groups of RSV. It has a good effect against RSV infection in two rodent models when dosed orally prior, prior to infection and maybe of clinical use. So, looking at aridone and the VIN compounds. This inhibits uncoating of pyconaviruses, which do not have a lipid membrane. The drug inserts into a canyon in the VPI of the protein and blocks ion transport. Another viral drug used is pleocanidol, which acts like a WIN compound in that it fits into a hydrophobic pocket in the nuclear capsid and interrupts the application of the virus by stopping the shedding of nuclear capsid proteins from the RNA. This orally taken compound is broadly active against a variety of entero and rhinoviruses. However, the reduction in the duration of symptoms is small and only occurs in some po small populations. An intranasal formulation of pleocanal represents an optimized delivery approach as compared to earlier oral formulation. So looking at the mantidine flumidine, these are now known to act as a viral protein. The M2 ion channel which is necessary for the acidification of the envelope virus and the endosome, a process that must occur for on of the virus. These drugs can also add to the maturation of influenza HA glycoprotein so that progeny variants are poorly infective. They are good for oral prophylaxis against influenza A but not influenza B. They are a good alternative to the vaccine in immunocompromised patients and the elderly. Other than this, they are not used much in Western countries. Proflifamatidine has been used in a lot of countries of the former USSR. Both of these drugs are licensed for use in the United States. Chloroquine and hydrochloroquine, these are widely used as anti-malarial drugs and also for treatment of rheumatoid arthritis, 
look best in periphery a too tiny a tie dye. If you also be noted that these studs have been used for fringe for a long time, especially as admin rails. They do have serious side effects including cardiac arrhythmias and pre genetically predisposed patients whom the does block ion channels that are involved in heartbeat control. They are lysomotropic agents that inhibit desertification of late endosomes and lysosomes and can block the entry of some viruses in the cytoplasm. <laughs> so, the best antiviral drugs have got good nucleic acid synthesis. They are selective because the virus can use its own enzyme to activate the drug and or the viral polymerases may be much more sensitive to the drug than corresponding host enzymes. Let's have a look at the first type. There's thymidine kinase substrates. So these allow the virus to grow in cells that do not have a high concentration of phosphorylated nucleate and acid precursors. There are cells that are not replicated in genomes such as nerve cells. Resting cells do, however, have unphosphorylated nucleosides. They use their own kinase, and this way the virus can grow in the non-dividing cells by phosphorylating the cell's nucleosides. The name of the enzyme is a bit of a monomer since it can work on other nucleosides other than thymine. Thymidine happens to be the best substrate because the enzyme is non-specific as to substrate. This is in contrast with the host cell thymidine kinase, which is very specific to thymidine, since the cell has other enzymes to phosphorylate the other nucleosides. The lateral specificity of the viral enzyme allows it to work on nucleoside analog drugs and phosphorylate them. The host enzyme, because of its greater specificity, it is much less good at this and often does not phosphorylate the drugs at all. <coughs> So the fact that the viral enzyme is quite good at phosphorylating the drug has another advantage. It can be administered in a nucleoside analog in a non-phosphorylated form. This is useful as it is difficult to get the phosphorylated drug into the cell because the plasma membranes are poorly permeable to phosphorylated compounds in the absence of specific transfer protein. The need for activation restricts the use of the drugs to viruses with their own thymidine kinase or on that cause the cell to overproduce the endogenous enzyme which may, if we are lucky, activate the drug to a lesser degree. To summarise the great use of these drugs results from the fact that they are only activated by this in virus infected cells. The activated form of the drug is rendered even more specific because of the viral DNA polymerase being more sensitive to the drug than the host enzyme. DNA synthesis inhibitors such as acyclovir or acyclovanosine. This is drug is very selective and is one of the better antiviral drugs. It is non-toxic to uninfected cells except some renal dysfunction because it is not activated by uninfected cells because the drug is a pure substrate for the very specific cell thymidine kinase. Moreover, the DNA polymerase of herpes simply virus is 10 times more sensitive than cellular DNA polymerase. This drug is a competitive inhibitor. It competes with DGDP, but also acts in another way that is more important. When it gets incorporated in DNA, it acts as a chain and terminator. This is taken orally, topically, or intravenously. And HSV, HS2, and VZV are susceptible to acyclovir. It is effect acyclovir is effective against herpes simplis keratitis. Latent HSV fever blisters caused by H. labialis genital herpes. Mutants of this type are a problem after long term use and have been shown to result from changes in the thymidine kinase or the polymerase gene. There's a product form of acyclovir called valacyclovir, also commercially known as zelotrets or valtrets, which is an L valine ester of the drug. This may be taken orally. So, look at the two pencyclovir used against HSV 1 and 2 and VZV. Encyclovir is similar in action to a cyclovir, that is a chair terminator, but it can only be used topically because of insolubility. Famcycyclovir is a pro drug of pencyclovir and is converted to pencyclovir as a result of oxidation and the hydrolysis of two ester groups. Because of the esterification, it is soluble in water and can be administered orally. It is also used for HSV1 and 2 and VZV infections. Famcyclovir is a drug very similar to a cyclovir, it's just an extra OH. It is also available as a pro drug called Valigan Cyclovir, which is an aovalene ester of Sancyclovir, Velocite. This is active against CMV, which is a drug of choice. A cyclovir has some activity against CMV in culture, but has not found much use in the therapy of these infections because of the superiority of Gancyclovir. As for cyclovir, Gancyclovir targets the viral DNA polymerase and acts as a chain terminator. In herpes virus treated in infected cells, it is phosphorylated by the vi vi viral polymerase kinase and then by viral. Cell kinase is to yield the cytosoma form of the drug which is operated into and terminates the DNA chain. However, CMV does not encode a thymidine kinase. Instead, gancyclovir is phosphorylated by a CMV encoded protein kinase, which accounts for the specificity of infected cells. Selectivity is also achieved because the viral polymerase has 30 times greater affinity for, for gancyclovir than the host enzyme. 
The encyclopedia is driven intravenously at a level of 10 mg per kilogram per day or orally at 3,000 mg per day. It is often used for CMV retinitis in AIDS patients for whom there is an intraocular that is intravisectical implant known as Vitacept. So looking at adenine aribosinazide, so acyclovir and encyclovir are chain terminators because they do not have a complete sugar ring. The appropriate free end OH group is needed to form a phosphodiester bond during DNA elongation is missing. Adenosine aribosinazidine has a complete sugar but is aribinose rather than ribose. This drug has severe side effects and is only used in potentially lethal disease. In addition, it is easily deaminated in the bloodstream to a less effective form, arahypothoxin. So looking at the next drug, this is also a chain terminator. It is phosphorylated by a cell kinase. It can be used against viruses without their own feminine kinase. The vest transcriptase is more sensitive to a drug than human DNA-dependent polymerase accounting for its specificity, but there are severe toxicity effects. This is used in an anti-HIV type 1 and type 2 drug. Because of the use of RNA polymerase 2 in the synthesis of viral genome of retroviruses and a consequent high rate of mutation in the virus, the selective pressure of the presence of the drug rapidly leads to the emergence of the resistant viral mutants. All of these mutations in, occur in the reverse transcriptase and because of the emergence of resistant mutants, mutants EZT is administered in combination with other drugs. Hydrophobia is a, a DNA chain terminate and DNA polymerase inhibitor. This drug is administered in the phosphomon, phosphomethoxine nucleoside form and is phosphorylated twice into cellular to the active diphosphate form using two cellular kinases, pyrimidine nucleoside monophosphate kinase and pyrimidine nucleoside diphosphate kinase. This inhibits the DNA polymerases of a number of viruses at concentrations that are substantially lower than those needed to inhibit DNA polymerases. It is active against herpes virus with fewer side effects than dencyclovir, although it does show nephritis or cytotoxicity and a number of other side effects. It has to be administered with probing acid in order to block renal tubular secretion of the drug. It is useful in the treatment of cytomyeladal virus and is indicated for the treatment of cytomyeladal virus, retinitis, in patients with AIDS. It is useful for the treatment of cyclovir resistant herpes infections and also active against POTS viruses including molossums, tansariasum virus, BK virus or polyoma virus, and adenoviruses. We can add didenoxacine. This is licensed for use against HIV and AZT resistant patients and in combination drugs along with AZT. So, zalcipatine, so it's used for, for use for HZT and HIV patients. There's pronounced toxicity because of lack of specificity to the viral polymerase and the rapid emergence of resistance to HIV mutant stains. Stavidine used in combination therapy, particularly in advanced HIV disease. Lamivudine used against HIV types 1 and 2 against hepatitis B virus. It acts as a chain termination during the rest transcription. For HIV, free TC can be administered with AZT in a combination drug. Combivir or with AZT, abacavir. Emcesatabine, this is another reverse transcriptase inhibitor that is active against HIV and hepatitis B virus. And tenovir. Base modifications, these are pyrimidine analogs that are incorporated in DNA by the viral DNA polymerase. They form unstable base pairs and mistranslation is also mutant proteins. They are competitive inhibitors of the viral DNA polymerase after intercellular phosphorylation. Bromovinyl deoxyrudine beruvidine is used for treating HSV type 1 and VZV. The drug is initially phosphorylated by viral pyrimidine kinase, hence specificity. It is used in various HSV and VSV infections, including HSV keratitis and genital herpes. It can be given orally or topically. Hydroxidine is similar to BVDDU and is used mainly in eye drops or a topical team for HSV keratitis. And Trifluidine is similar in the mode of action to BVDU and IDU. It is also activated by viral pyrimidine kinase. TFT is used as a topical treatment or an eye drops for HSV keratitis. Nucleoside inhibitors of S transcriptase. These are the most potent and selective of S transcriptase inhibitors that we have working at nanomolar concentration. They have minimal toxicity tests with culture cells and have been shown to work synergistically with nucleoside analogs such as AZT. Moreover, they work in this nucleoside analog resistant HIV. These drugs should have high therapeutic index and also show great bioavailability so that antiviral concentration is readily achievable. They are non competitive reverse transcriptase inhibitors that target an allosteric pocket on the reverse transcriptase molecule. Nevirapine and monotherapy, this drug causes an initial fall in a number of HIV variants, but resistance sets in and the virus titles rise against a high level. The drug has been approved for therapy in AIDS patients. Deliviridine, this is a bis heteroaral pe compound. 
considerable increases are observed in CD4 plus cells in combination therapy using the stud with AZT and FTTC. Efarins. Efavirenz is used in combination with other drugs and can suppress viral load at least as well as a protease inhibitor. Indinavir is the equivalent combination of nucleoside vest transcriptase inhibitors and a comparison of viral load reductions with efavirenz. Tarnit is a competitive inhibitor of DNA polymerase. It binds to the pyrophosphate site. Viral DNA polymerase is inhibited at 10 to 100 lower concentration of cell DNA polymerases given some selectivity. It is used intravenously for CMV retinitis as aid patients and in other immunocompromised patients. It is useful when the infecting virus has gained resistance to other drugs such as acyclovir. DNA integration. So, retroviruses copy the RNA genome into DNA using the vest transcriptase. The DNA may remain as a circular pyrovirus or may be integrated into cellular DNA. The latter is necessary for transcription of genomic and messenger RNA, thus, integration is required for viral replication. Integration of viral DNA is affected by the integrase enzyme which is encoded in a pole gene. The necessity of integ integration for replication means that the integrase will be selective as a target. Recently, a specific integrase inhibitor has been approved. Raltetravir. A synthesis can be used as part of a HARRT regimen when a patient is resistant to other drugs such as protease inhibitors. It is not approved for HIV infected children. Ribavarine. This drug is not a primidine or purine. It inhibits influenza or any polymerase non competitively in vitro but poorly in vivo. It can act as a duanosine analogue and inhibit 5 n cap formation in mRNA. The cap normally contains methyl duanosine. However, rivavirine is known to inhibit the production of infectious poliovirus, and this virus does not have a methyl duanosine cap, so there must be alternative mechanisms for rivavirine action. <laughs> it is likely this drug induces multiple mutations into a viral RNA, rendering it incapable of a new round of cell infection. This drug, a potent inhibitor of s adenosyl homocysteine hydrolase, can inhibit capping of mRNA. It can also interfere with the replication of HIV by inhibition of the TAT transformation process. So for it inhibits hepatitis C viruses RNA polymerase enzyme and is a chain terminating nucleotide analogue which is incorporated in a newly synthesized viral RNA. On the best thing, this is an antisense oligonucleotide made of 22, 21 nucleosides that are phosphorylated to be stabilized. It can be administered an ocular injection for CMV retinitis. It specifically hybridizes to the mRNA for CMV immediately blocking its translation. Because many viruses must leave the proteins that they make in the case of surface glycoproteins, this is usually carried out by a host protease in the secretory pathway in the Golgi body. In the case of internal proteins such as the polymerase with the group specific antigens of retroviruses and other viruses, there is a viral protease that is encoded in a pole gene. So protein modification inhibitors are processes that occur in protein modifications with the inhibitors targeted such as glycosylation, cyadylation. So the dose of glycosylation. 2 deoxyl glucose and D-glucosamine interfere with glycosylation in vitro. So, catasospermine interferes with glycosylation of HIV and other retroviruses and leads to a dramatic decrease in synthesia. Cyalidation, so two glycoproteins are found in the surface of influenza viruses, the hemoglutinin and the neuramidase, neuramidase cyalidase. The latter are several functions that allows the virus to move through mucus secretion and respiratory tract so that it may infect new cells. Since sialic acid is an influenza receptor, it is necessary to remove sialic acid from the surface of the infected cell and of the virus where the viral particles may escape. The new remedies is therefore very important for the spread of the virus from the cell to cell. So look at two types of drugs. Xanamivir. So Xanamivir is an antiviral agent for the influenza announced in the fall of the early 2000s. It is a potent inhibitor of the viral new remedies of types A and B influenza viruses. Treatment of community acquired type A and B influenza is Zamivir shortening the duration of major symptoms by about one day and three days in sickle patients. And looking finally at Ostelmavir, this is another unanimous inhibitor where Osteltalmia is a tribocyclic, sialic, and analog can be given orally. That's the end of the video today. Thank you very much for watching. In our next video, we'll be focusing on antibodies and antibody processes and formations and antigens. Thank you.